Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Psalm 39 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. Thank you for hope in you, God. All of our hope lies in you. In Jesus' name we pray. All of you and none of me, Lord. Amen. All right, you guys, Psalm 39 verse 12. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I am a sojourner with you, a guest like all my fathers. All right, so this is a, a psalm of David, right, where he was going through a lot of, you could tell he was going through a lot of anguish with other people, but he was also exhibiting physical symptoms um, in his body based on what he was going through. And so um, at one point he was even silent. So it seemed like initially in the beginning of the Psalm, he was um, choosing to be silent amongst his enemies. And then he was saying how it was building and building up in him. And then um, the second part, it seems like he was silenced, like he had a stroke or something. He said, even ask God to remove the stroke, his stroke from him um, and for God to turn away from him um, it, because he felt like God was like piercing him with his look. And so he was like, he, he almost seemed like he was saying that God was like beating him down, right, for his sin. And so it says in verse 12, hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. First of all, you know, we know that God hears us, right? God, God hears us, his children. We are his children. He is our father. He is, we've talked about this before. He's not going to give us a stone um, if we're asking for bread right? He, we're his little children. He sees us as his children. Yes, we go through seasons of strain and seasons of rebuke, but we are still his children. He, he doesn't have to let us continue on living in this world, but he does, right? He continues to sustain us in this land of the world as we are just guests, as the next part says. It says, hold not your peace at my tears. So he's wanting God to be moved by his tears. He wants God, and don't we all, right? Um, want God to be moved by our condition, want God to be moved by our situation. Well, you know what? He does. He cares about your situation. Even when you're in a season of rebuke, right? He chastens those whom he loves. He's not going to um, just sit back and allow your destruction. He's going to make sure that you get in the right positioning. And so sometimes that takes rebuke. Sometimes that takes chastening. Sometimes that takes a rod, right? And so it's if if he did not love you as his child, he would not bring a rod, right? He would just allow you to continue on in the direction that you're going. But because he loves you, he brings that rod. It says, for I am a sojourner with you, a guest like all my fathers. So we know that the word sojourner is talking about the fact that we are mere visitors in this land called the world, right? Our life is but a vapor. Our life, we're here today and gone tomorrow. It's basically the same way the grass goes and com comes and goes and a new blade of grass comes in its place. It's not the same blade of grass growing and growing back and forth and getting cut down and pushed up. No, no, no. This, every blade of grass that you see that you cut down more grass is coming right new blades of grass are coming in the same way in the world more people are coming new people are coming people are leaving every day and people are coming every day right and it says for I am a sojourner with you a guest like all my fathers he is saying he is a guest in this world that God has allowed here um God is with him as he's here on this earth, but he's a guest, right? And he has to return home 
we have to return home at the end of the day. We have to go back to this place where we have come from. We are guests. It says a guest like all my fathers. So God is, is a good God, right? He is a, a God who is going to cause us to come back to him, right? Um, we are here temporarily. Some of us want to go as soon as possible, but you know what? God knows what's best for us. He's working everything together for our good. It says, hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears. God hears you. God sees you. He sees your crushed state, your humble state. He sees your lowliness. He sees your pain. He sees what you're going through on a daily basis. And he wants you to know that he sees you. But you know what? We are sojourners in this world with him. He is with us as we are here as guests. We are pressing toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. We have to keep moving forward day by day right we're we're only a guest for a temporary amount of time right it seems like a long time but we have to trust in him that he is with us as we're here as guests and we are and there's nothing unique to our situation we are guests just like our fathers were guests our grandfathers our great grandfathers their lives were here and then they're gone right? So we need to use our time wisely, allow even the season of rebuke to be used. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word, Lord Jesus. Help us to use your chastening. Help us to use the rod that you have pointed towards us in seasons, Lord God, to move forward help it to point the way God let it be a staff so much more than a rod Lord God we ask you that you care about our our season we know you do we ask you that you lead and guide and direct us in our season we know you are we know you hear our prayer God we love you give us peace God give those who are in distress right now give them peace God, give them peace. Lay your hand upon them, God. Give them comfort and compassion, Lord God, where they need it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. Amen. Um, one of the best ways to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read his word, chew on his word and talk to him. Um, as you continue to talk to him, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So seek his face and he's going to begin to talk back to you. Um, also the Lord wants us to not forsake the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Make sure you're going out, you find a church home, a place where you can be baptized in the name of the father, the son, and the Holy spirit in the name of Jesus. Um, also a place where you can go and find other believers to be around so that you could stay sharp in the word of God. This is important to Christ. So we should make sure we make it a priority, um, also go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.